Hi, thanks for looking in. My name's Joe Driver. I was with BBC Television as a sound man for about 25 years. And I've picked up a few wrinkles and tips along the way, and I'd like to pass them on to you. This first video is about moving coil microphones. They're often called dynamic microphones. I'd like to start with the absolute basics of how these mics work. I'm sure you recognize this. It's a loudspeaker chassis taken out of a speaker box. Its job is to convert alternating current from a power amplifier into sound waves, obviously, so we can hear them. It consists of a, a powerful magnet and the pole pieces on the magnet are arranged so that there's a circular slot on the front into which a coil attached to this cylinder here can move in and out and that's attached to the cone that moves the cone in and out. Now here I've connected the speaker to an oscilloscope. It's an instrument that shows electrical waveforms in real time. And I'm going to connect the speaker and the scope to, in this case, a battery. A couple of one and a half volt cells wired up to give three volts. And watch this. When I connect the battery one way, the cone moves outwards and the straight line on the scope showing the voltage jumps up to show three volts positive. Yeah? Uh, if I connect them the other way around, reverse the connections, the cone moves inwards and the scope display moves down showing three volts negative. Now I'm going to connect a vibrating current to our rig and it's actually the mains but I've stepped the voltage down through this transformer from 240 to about 6 through the transformer to avoid electrocuting myself. And I'm now going to connect that to the speaker. That hum is the sound from the mains. But it could just as easily be the sound from a bass guitar or an organ. So what? That's what you'd expect from a loudspeaker. Of course it is, yeah. Now watch what happens when I do the opposite. Instead of putting current into the coil to make it move, I move the coil by mechanical means, my hand. I move it gently like this. Do you see the trace on the scope is going up and down? It does the opposite of what a speaker does. It generates the voltage. It's become a microphone. There we are. Incidentally, I've had to increase the amplification of the scope enormously because the the speech current from using it as a microphone is very, very quiet indeed. Very, very low voltage indeed. Let's have a listen to it. See what it sounds like as a microphone. Not the best mic in the world. It's got this cardboard flapping cone attached to the coil. But I can improve the sound a lot by cutting a lot of the cone away. That's what's causing the bassy resonance. Ooh, quite tough, isn't it? All in the interests of science, I'm afraid. Now, without all this cardboard, it should sound a lot better. The vibrating bit in a speaker is called the cone, but in a microphone it's called the diaphragm. It's the same thing, only far more fragile and lightweight in the case of a microphone. This is the capsule from, when I say the capsule, it's the assembly consisting of the magnet and the coil and the diaphragm from uh, a fairly cheapo uh, vocal mic and um, it's very difficult to see. I tried to take this to bits but failed but through those little holes which sort of focus the sound onto the diaphragm there is a little aluminium diaphragm with corrugations in it to break up any resonances that the uh, a stiffer uh, uh, construction might, might have um, and there's a tiny tiny little coil attached just like the loudspeaker but in miniature and another slot um, in, in the magnet which is which is here and um, it's much much tinier scale but of course it won't have those nasty resonances that the loudspeaker had. To give good sound quality the diaphragm must be very light so that it doesn't resonate within an audible range of frequencies. That would distort the sound by adding extra volume to those frequencies. In the case of a mic designed for speech, like one of these press to talk communication mics, it's not a bad thing for the mic to have resonances at speech frequencies. 
it can actually add to the intelligibility of the speech. But with mics designed for music, the resonances must be eliminated as far as possible. Generally speaking, the fewer resonances a mic has, the higher the price. Sometimes, like in the case of a vocal mic, a little resonance at the right frequency can be a good thing. As an example, this Shure SM58, which is an extremely popular vocal mic, has a little resonance, a presence peak if you like, in the upper mid-range, which gives a useful lift to a performer's voice in a live situation. So to sum up, all moving coil microphones consist of a carefully suspended diaphragm with a coil of wire attached, which is free to move in a magnetic field. That's the basic principle. And the pickup pattern or directivity of the mic or its suitability for different jobs is dependent entirely on the housing that it's mounted in, the moving coil assembly is mounted in. Some moving coil mics have more than one diaphragm and the two are connected in different ways to achieve different results. Thanks for watching. If you found this interesting, please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video, which is all about connecting up your microphones to other equipment.